Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. I have to tell you something. This is the most amazing audience I think ever in television. Yesterday, I showed you that 17 of the top 25 books on Amazon.com, The Movers and Shakers, were books that we talked about on this program. Books that were related to the founders, faith, and constitution. You are changing the dynamics in America. But we also mentioned a new, uh, a new site on Wiener Facts, in case you need Wiener Facts. It quickly became the number one hot search on Google yesterday. No, really, search, search Wiener Facts on Google right now. Please do that. It's got all kinds of information, including one fact I found very, very interesting. Wiener, you know, the Wiener in Congress? I should probably be more specific than that. The only one that's actually a Wiener he complained about gold dealers, okay? But did he know that the U.S. Mint silver proof set of coins worth $7 is being sold for $52? That's a 600% markup. I think maybe Mr. Wiener should get out his investigation eyeglasses and start looking at the U.S. Mint. Ha <laughs> ha, yes, yes. Just another wiener fact for you, that's it. Hello, America. I got up this morning and I, I feel like, have you ever felt like you're in a parallel universe? Or better yet, maybe sometimes, I, I feel like we're on a Hollywood set in a movie or something. Because I have no logical way to explain any of the things that are going on in America today. Well, oh yeah, Crime Inc. and Shore Bank. <laughs> I do have a logical way, but nobody seems to pay attention to it. It's amazing. This morning I got up and I open up the paper and I read about the chairman of the president's economic recovery advisory board, Paul Volcker. This is the, this is the guy who's been there for TARP and he was there for the, the stimulus package and oh, I mean all of it, all of it, health care, all of it. He said that the United States doesn't have a sense of urgency now and that, quote, there are serious questions, most immediately, about the sustainability of our commitment to growing entitlement programs. You've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding me. You know, I read that and I thought, gee, that sounds familiar. It sounds like somebody has, has been saying that. Oh, without it. You've been saying that. I've been saying that. Where is Anthony Weiner? Because it sounds to me like Paul Volcker is engaging. Oh, look, there he is on the Weiner tube. Sounds to me like Paul Volcker is engaging in fear-mongering. By the way, speaking of fear-mongering, pay no attention to the Dow falling 376 points today and is down 900 points for the month. Pay no attention to that. It's fine. Actually, the president just spoke a few minutes ago, and it was great because he's pushing bank regulations now. So we're all set. Because this time, if you just do the bank regulations, then we won't have any more problems. Because we're on, everything's fine. We're past the worst. <laughs> you know, when I first put this show together, I thought about, how am I going to do it? How do I want to approach it? Um, I thought about the chalkboard, and uh, thought, <laughs> should do that. But the original idea on this program, uh, at least the way I saw it originally, when I was, before I got here, was just to tell you the story of America. That's what it was going to be. Just, the story of America. America, here's your story. We're going to add a new page today. Tell you what was going on. It's not a story anymore, you know? It's like a movie. And a movie has no basis in reality. It's like a Freddy Krueger movie. What is that? What? Why we have to make things up or pay, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain is beyond me. Because there are amazing things that are happening in America now. I'm fascinated by journalists because um, they don't get the news or the story, usually, you know? The news comes from the facts of what happens. But behind the news are amazing stories. My kids, they hated history when they were really, really little, and I, I told them that's because you were memorizing dates and, and places instead of learning about the story. The stories are great. When I think about everything that is happening, everything that is happening, you can always look at every story and see a little bit of yourself. 
Increasingly, news stories, I don't recognize the people in them anymore. I see people on TV, and I don't even, I don't know who they are. And, and, and what's happening is a fairy tale. It's nothing like news or a story. Stories have to be based in reality, and you have to be able to see yourself in them. So let me do that. Let me show you a news story that you probably haven't heard. The other day, I showed you pictures. Um, I showed you some pictures uh, of a protest. In fact, listen to this. Here it is. Mr. Greg Bear's house. Mr. Greg Bear is a lobbyist that works for Bank of America. Bank for America! Okay. This is SCIU, and they're doing a protest, and the, the media barely covered this. This is at a guy's house. Okay. Now, let me tell you the story. Greg Bear is a dad. He's a, he's a banker, but he's a dad. He enjoyed last Sunday afternoon watching his youngest son play in a Little League baseball game. I have to tell you, I was uh, Sunday afternoon playing frisbat with my son Rafe. Uh, we play frisbat because I'm better at throwing a bat than I am a baseball. And at one point, my five-year-old son did the same thing he did with a baseball. He picked up the frisbee and said, wow, Dad, you're not really good at this either. I'm not. I didn't play sports as a kid, but I love playing with my son. And I can't wait to do what Greg did on Sunday, watch my son play baseball. Unfortunately for Greg, his day was about to turn for the worse. He was driving home after the game, no doubt talking about the highs and lows of the game with his son. And he was shocked to find out what was waiting for him when he got home. An angry mob of protesters. The protesters surrounding his house, screaming, yelling, bloody murder. Greg was horrified. Not only because his younger son was sitting in the car with him. Can you imagine, as a parent, can you turn the audio down, please? As a parent, he was sitting there and his youngest son was in the car and they pull up to this at his house. Now, can you imagine what your kid is thinking? Can you imagine the fear? Can you imagine what you feel as a parent? Not just because this son is sitting next to you seeing this, but because you realize now that your 14-year-old son is in the home all by himself. These protesters were bussed in. 14 buses filled with 500 people. They poured out of the buses like locusts on this man's property right up to the house. Greg's son, Jack, he's alone in the house. He was so frightened, the mob was yelling, becoming angrier. He didn't know what to do. He went into the bathroom and locked himself in the bathroom and then called his dad's cell phone. Dad, still in the car, is now faced with a decision. What would you do? You've got one young son. You have this surrounding your house. You have another son inside. What do you do? You gonna leave this one in the car? Are you gonna take this one with you here? Are you gonna leave him in? You gonna call police? What do you do? He called police. Police feared intervention would only incite the crowd even more. Well, now dad had to make a decision. He didn't have very much time to think. Mobs can turn at any moment. Police are afraid of this mob. So he drove around the corner and parked his car about a block or so away and left his, I would imagine, very frightened 12-year-old son inside still sitting in the baseball uniform. And then he goes to get his older son out of the house. Now here he is. They're surrounding his house. He's got to take out his key and go into the house. Mob, 500 people. He makes his way through the house. Excuse me, excuse me, need to get into the house. He said, I have a child in there who is alone and frightened. Let me pass. They just continued to yell and chant. Can you see yourself in this situation? I hope to God you never do. He eventually got your son, his son out of the house got back into the car, he now had his two boys, and they got the hell out of there. Now this guy must be a monster, right? Right? Had to be a monster. I mean, what would you do to get 500 mobsters surrounding your house like that? Well, as much as no one deserves this kind of treatment, you leave the families out of it. 
Here's the excuse. They were from a union. They're from SEIU. And he works at a bank. They claim to be angry because Bear is the deputy general counsel for corporate law at Bank of America. Yeah, he's one of those evil bank executives. Greedy Bush crony, no doubt. Oh, no. No, actually, he's a lifelong Democrat who worked for the Clinton Treasury Department. Now he's an evil banker. Get him and the kids.